Well, you can have everything that Father promised in His Word uh, if you just agree with Him. And it really isn't, and it, listen to me, dear people, I don't care what you go through, it isn't any harder than that. It's been over analyzed and made so complicated, but faith just simply works in the realm of agreement. It's first and foremost just believing that God is going to do all that he says that he's going to do. Well, I don't even know if you need to even limit it to that. They're just agreeing with God and just saying it's mine. You just begin to say these things of heaven. Just say these things of heaven. Just begin to say these things of heaven. They're mine right now. I'm overwhelmed. I'm amazed. Keep saying now, come on, don't be disobedient children. Don't be hard children. Don't be don't be children that won't come cooperate. Don't be children overwhelmed with your circumstances. Huh? Just say these things of heaven. They're mine right now. I have the glory. I have a river. His presence is now fills me. Thank you, Lord, for all these wonderful things that you have done. Thank you, Lord, for all these wonderful things that you have done. You know, people have, people have found value in positive thinking. Well, I can understand that. That is purely earthly. And if people can find value in positive thinking, what happens when you and I begin to agree with God's good promises and the Holy Ghost invades it? I mean, come on. People walk around sad and disappointed, unhappy, not blessed, not receiving the heritage of Jesus Christ. You know, this morning I was just contemplating Isaiah 58, and the Lord said, If you'll keep my Sabbath, not turn away your foot from doing my will on my holy day. If you'll speak my word, then I'll cause you to ride upon my high places and I'll feed you with the heritage of Jacob, and I'll, you'll be blessed. Well, you know, I can understand all that in the New Testament context. I understand what the Sabbath is. Sabbath is entering into God's rest. Just calling it done. It says it's finished. On the, fin on the Sabbath the day, he finished all of his works. It says it's done. And then just get happy, everybody. Just come on, because it's done. It's Hallelujah. Think about it is, for a lot of people, it's not done yet. For me, it's done. I've entered into the faith where it's done. I'm complete in Jesus Christ. In other words, I'm finished up. Hallelujah. I'm finished in him. <laughs> and when you grab a hold of that, when you, then you're not going to turn away your foot from keeping the Sabbath. Because Jesus is Jesus ultimately came in and fulfilled the Sabbath. He said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. He came in and he came in declaring to us the finished work of God. He said, It is finished. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, It is finished. It's like the Lord on the sixth day, having completed all of his work, said, It is finished. And if you and I are willing to enter into that rest, there is a rest that remaineth therefore for the children of God to enter into. It's to therefore if you're not entered into it, labor to enter in. And it's not so hard. Jesus said, all you that labor heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you Sabbath. I'll give you the rest. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. What happens is we fail to agree. We agree with all the voices of failure. We agree with all the voices of shame. We agree with all the voices of discouragement. And if we're not careful, we'll become a powerhouse and an instrument for demon powers to work their work. And we don't even want to. Don't even want to. Want to serve God. Want to walk with God. But are allowing our minds and our hearts and our thoughts and our thinkings to be overwhelmed with all of the suggestions of darkness and all the, you know, imaginations of the human realm. Oh, what happens when all of a sudden we become those who live by the word, who don't turn away our foot from keeping the Sabbath. Don't turn away our foot from acknowledging that it's a finished work, that the Jesus Christ finished all of these things for us at Calvary. He said, it is finished. And said, all that are weary and heavy laden, come on into my rest. Come on into the Sabbath. Now, if you just come and begin to keep the Sabbath, in other words, you'll become, you'll, it's every day a Sabbath. It's a whole life. It's a whole realm. It's a whole existence of Sabbath. To say, Lord, I'm your finished work. I'm your vessel. I'm bought with a price. I'm not my own. I'm going to glorify you. Look, it glorifying God isn't, it doesn't, it, it it's going to result in a feeling, but you know what? You can be overwhelmed and things of life and circumstance can impose feelings upon you. 
uh, being tired can impose impose feelings upon you huh? being emotionally taxed because the situations and things and events around you can impose feelings on you okay viruses flu bugs you know diseases can impose feelings of weakness upon you think about it now what happens if you say I'm not gonna go with that what happens if you are able to say you know what I'm I'm the redeemed of the Lord I'm I, I'm the healed of the Lord I'm the blessed of the Lord. That's not positive thinking. That's God thinking. It's a whole nother realm. People with their own strength and human ability and might have gained great riches, have accomplished great things just out of the framework of human confidence. My goodness, if people can, comp can accomplish all of that out of the realm of human confidence, <clears throat> what happens when God's people begin to agree with the Word of God? What happens when you become wise enough when you become mature enough to realize that whatever you're thinking and whatever you're agreeing with is ultimately what you're yielding your members to, your spirit to, your soul to, your being to. It's what's trafficking in your life. It's what you now are becoming an instrument to, to have an effect of, on people around you. And whether that is, whether that is uh, yielding your members unto righteousness or whether that's yielding your members unto iniquity I mean if you don't turn away your foot from keeping the Sabbath from if you don't turn away your foot from recognizing this is the faith that was once delivered unto the Saints where we are now finished in him, him we are complete in him we are his we belong unto the Living God and now you can you give yourself to speaking his word and declaring his word what happens is all of a sudden the Lord said, I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob. Now, feeding us with the heritage of Jacob, that means anytime you step into this kind of, of blessing and provision, suddenly it's wealth and blessings in every dimension of life. First and foremost, the spiritual blessings because Father is in your midst and we can say, God is in my midst. I, I've watched over and again as, as I see and behold, you listen to me now. I watch and behold and observe over and again where there are too many folks have, as it were, houses built upon the sand. And they have houses built upon the sand because they hear the word, but they do not do it. And then, then people get all trapped up and they say, well, if I'm hearing the word and I'm going to do it, then that means, you know, I'm going to live under some legalistic code doing it. No, 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 no. Hearing the word of God and doing it says, I have entered into the rest. I'm complete in him. I belong to him. He is mine. I'm his. I have this power of God at work in my life. I have all the blessings of, uh, that God has promised and provided. I live under the word of him, of God. I do it. I, in other words, first and foremost, I agree. I agree with him. Hallelujah. I agree with him. Today I'm here in a meeting and I'm wanting to lead you into a place of life. Last night I was in a meeting. All I wanted to do was testify of Jesus because everybody there, most everybody there didn't know the Lord. Maybe they thought they did. It wasn't a time to lead people in the realms of the Spirit. It was a time to lead people to, G to Calvary's cross. I want to lead you in the realms of the Spirit. That's what I'm doing here. I want to lead you into a place where you can acknowledge every good thing that is in you and if you can begin to acknowledge every good thing that is in you then your faith will be effectual you can begin to acknowledge all that God has done for you if you can begin to agree with God and not agree with the storms of life the winds and and, and, and the rain and, and and not agree with all of those things that would come and as it were impose itself upon you and as Jesus described beat vehemently <laughs> Anybody been beat vehemently lately by circumstances? Well, if your, ha if your house is built upon the rock, if you've entered into the rest, you're, non you're unmovable, you're unshakable. You just curl up in the bed and, you know, and just say, you know what, we're going to have a pajama day. <laughs> kind of thing, right? <laughs> you're not worried about it at all. You're not concerned about it at all. Just say, thank you, Father, I'm on the rock. We're all, it's a stormy, it's a stormy, a life-threatening condition. <laughs> out there <laughs> but over here we safe in the arms of the master hallelujah we safe in the presence of the living God 
Hallelujah. Amak Jagalem and Godori. Halabasete. And then we find it. We just find our we find ourselves we find ourselves in we find ourselves in, in situations all the time. The other day I was I, I took my car in, my truck in, a brand new truck I got, the Lord gave to me a provision from heaven. Miracle provision from heaven. And they told me that my my uh, warranty was invalid on its, on on something because I hand, ended up having diesel and DEF fluid, which is, you don't need to go and explain all that. But they said my warranty is invalid, and I uh, I was upset. I was upset, and I counted how long I could be upset. When you mature in God, you can be upset two seconds. <laughs> if you've never walked in the, the anointing and lived under the authority of the Word of God, then you get five minutes. But then we want to wean that down to about two seconds. And then I said, okay, I, I was upset. I can't even believe this. You've got to be kidding me, you know. And then I said, Father, I thank you that I can, uh, I am privileged to submit myself to your word. And I can now begin to give thanks and to rejoice in all things. And thank you, Father, that you're in charge, but don't let this stand. <laughs> don't let this stand. And so then they're all telling me how it's just impossible. And everybody says it can't work and call customer service at this place and that place and everybody said no nah, it just can't no it's just you know you messed up you're a dunderhead you put diesel in the wrong place and i didn't do that but you know so bottom line of it is <laughs> we just went to bed praising god and thanking him for all of his goodness and say can't touch nothing we got you know just we're not letting the curse come out of our mouth. We're not going to agree with the circumstance because if you do, circumstance wins. You agree with the curse, you curse. Till you break that thing off by repentance and saying, Father, I agree with the blessing now. I, if I can teach you something so simple, you're, you will never again live in the defeat and the problems that you've lived in. You'll never again be an instrument of unrighteousness. I'm telling you, dear people, you listen to me. It's easier to get a move of God a bunch of among a bunch of repenting sinners who were committing all kinds of vile acts last night than a bunch of saints who were complaining and murmuring and thinking that everything's not working out well and talking bad about people. I'm telling you, just you understand me. It is a, it, it, you, it, I want you to make a shift from the complaint. I want you to make a shift from the murmuring. I want you to make the shift, shift from the unthankfulness. I want you just to start acknowledging God. I want you to start saying, I've got a river. Thank you, Father, for the river. I thank you for the river and if they changes everything when you do that all of a sudden maybe your circum maybe your circumstances had taken your attitudes prisoner but as soon as you begin to acknowledge God <laughs> as soon as you begin to agree with his word hallelujah Jesus sent his word and cast out the devils I mean he just speak in the word and the devils have to go the oppressive spirits have to go and that's what I practice. That's why we preach the gospel. The Lord chose to sh demonstrate his power through the foolishness of preaching. We just send forth the word of God. We saturate people and bathe people in the word of God. And then by the time you leave the meeting, there's a different atmosphere. What if you got enough wisdom to recognize that you all you need to do that all you need to do, do is do that all day long. All you need to do, and especially when you have circumstances that oppose you, that you have a shield of faith <laughs> that quenches every violence of Satan, every violent fiery dart that he throws at you. You can just stop and you can begin. You can just throw up your hands and say, "I lift my hands." Up. Unto your day, hallelujah, uh, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to praise you. I'm going to give thanks to nothing. No power has, has any ability to impose itself upon me. If we could just see just a stormy wind and wave, it's time to go to sleep. That's what Jesus did. He was so asleep. The circumstance in this situation could it wake him up. His, his ailing disciples could wake him up because he's going to respond to the ailing disciples of, oh, ye of little faith, how long am I going to have to put up with this now? When am I going to have a people that are no longer under the power of circumstance and under the power of the situations as they perceive them as with their eyes? But now well, I'm going to have a people who will trust me and live by my word. Next morning, they called me up and said, uh, Mr. Spitzbergen, we just want you to know that they said this one time they're going to do this for you.
This is an extreme exception. Well, I'm extremely exceptional. I didn't tell them that. And somebody said, you bragging? I'm, well, I'm boasting in the Lord. I mean, when you've been made a son of God, you're exceptional. <laughs> when you've been made an heir of God, you're exceptional. When you've been so filled up with God that His presence flows out of you like rivers, you are exceptional. All of a sudden, you're in a different class of people. You're not under the load. You're not living under the subjugation of those things that Satan and circumstances and mind, the mind of men would oppose. Upon I'm not letting nothing in my own mind and imagination as I would try to logically conclude, oh, well, you know, this is their rules and it's just fixed and I can understand why they have this. I'm not going to go down that road because as soon as I do, I hem myself in and I fence God out. I'm going to live not in an imagination of a logical explanation for everybody's reason why I can't be blessed <laughs> and why I can't walk in divine provision. And why the surges of heaven aren't functioning through my life. And why, 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 why? I'm going to rather just rejoice in the Lord and leave it all to Him. God said, send Judah first. That's what He said. He said, you just lift up your voice and you start praising. You lift up your voice and you start blessing the Lord with all your soul. I, if you wanted to understand the entrance in, the way to be kept by the power of God is, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul is the key. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, I bless His holy name. If God's people could get enough insight and spiritual understanding in the knowledge of the Lord to recognize, I mean if you could guys set up some seats back there for folks coming in late, you know it just helps me out and you can basically then take care of what's going on. You can have a great respect for what's going on and have a reverence for what's going on instead of the trafficking. Okay? Quit letting things traffic in your life. Quit letting things disrupt and distract you in your life. Because listen, if you get your heart fixed, if you understand that there are spiritual keys, these aren't just scripture verses so that you can memorize them or, 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 or psalms that you can sing them. They are spiritual keys. They are insight to a different kind of living. God showed us how to enter into His holies of holies. Yeah. I know how to get there. And more than that, I know how to live there. <laughs> I come by the blood of Jesus Christ through a new and living way which he consecrated for me through the veil of his flesh. I mean, think about the beauty of God's love for us that he would provide his own life for us as food and as drink, as provision for our daily living. <laughs> Woohoo! Everything Jesus did at Calvary is provision for daily living. It's not something that happened. Is it working? Praise the Lord. I just thought I would check for the folks up there. I see some confused faces, I think. Maybe they can hear me. But the Lord is always saying, He's saying, He's always saying, you know, let him who has ears to hear, because unfortunately there's too many people that sit in the house of the Lord that cannot hear. I mean, if you think about it, Jesus did not use that address really in context to the lost. He used that address in context to the church, to his people. Oh, to have the ability to spiritually hear God. Wouldn't you love to hear His voice? Wouldn't you love to hear Him comfort you? Wouldn't you love to hear Him instruct you? Wouldn't you love Him to, to love to hear Him speak secret things to you? It all begins because you're willing to hear His word that has been written. He said, look, if someone raised from the dead, they wouldn't believe. If they're not going to believe what's written in the word, they would not believe. 
believe even if someone was raised from the dead, the biggest spiritual hindrances that God's people have from, that, that hold them back from living in the glory, from living in the overshadowing of his presence, who living in the, di the dimensions of his divine power, is just this simple thing. It's not some complicated thing. It's uh, the unwillingness to hear his voice and believe that what he said is true and be happy about it all the time to take up this means of his life for our daily living and snacking in between. <laughs> Meals is an absolute essential. You can get fat. You will make you, he wants to make you fat. He wants to make you so fat. Hallelujah. On his word and with his goodness. It is so important for God's people to have a right heart and a right disposition towards him. He's not going to agree with the doubts and lies and unbelief and fear. He's never going to agree with it. And so many people get stuck in doubt and lies and unbelief and fear. And they want God to agree with them somehow and do something for them in the state of their fear. And he's saying, he's calling us out of it. He's saying, I want you to agree with me. I want you to believe for without faith it is impossible to please God. If you're going to walk with God, you're going to have to be willing to agree with Him. And if you simply will do that, my, your whole life, the whole dynamics of your life begins to change. Listen, this change ha ha demands your dependency upon the activated power of God in your life. The activated power of God in your life, like on the, on the level of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 5, where Paul says, that your faith may be in the power of God, not in your own human ability, not in your ideology. Too much mental assent, people just quoting verses of Scripture, oh, quoting verses of Scripture, reminding God of verses of Scripture. They never agreed. They've never accepted. They've never received. Or they rarely do. Oh, I want you to live under showers of blessings. But if you're going to live under showers of blessings, you're going to have to live under the word that God has provided you and I to have those showers of blessings through. Amen. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, dear people, if you can grab a hold of the reality that seems to be so aloof that the, you have a treasure on the inside of you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. Chris was telling me that we reached the point since like what January? How, since when? Since I came back from Japan when that was November, right? That was November last year. Since November last year, we've quoted over ten thousand verses of scripture. You know, and if we haven't can't get it done with ten thousand verses of scripture. <laughs> I mean, just one of them will change everything. Just one spoken word of God hung the stars and galaxies that are more than can ever be numbered. And he's, and he's bathed us with his promises. And he's bathed us with his blessings. Over and again, we choose to believe other reports. Because we logically conclude, we rationalize, we figure it out. Oh, yes, we hear some crazy nonsense that blocks out every power of God. And we say, yes, uh, that makes sense. <laughs> One person laughing, everybody else is in a shock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, what I did is I just caught you. <laughs> And you're looking at me like, oh no, I wasn't supposed to do that. Exactly. Exactly. You must keep your heart with all diligence for out of it, out of it proceeds the issues of life. For what? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. For whatever it is, I pray God in Jesus' name, the word of God is hidden in your heart. I pray in Jesus' name, the peace of God rules your heart. 
Because when that happens, you can begin to affect the, the treasure that is on the inside of you. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. That the excellency of the power, that the effectiveness, that the might, that the glory, that the majesty, that the, the empowerment of his power yes. <laughs> can be now of God and not of you. But there's a recognition of a treasure. Yeah. Not a poverty. No, well, we out of money. We empty. We empty. Why am I so dry and empty? Because you're believing another report. You're believing something that is not of God. I'm so happy that all of you got here early because those that are coming in late will never hear what I just said. They may never hear. They may never have a chance to have the insight and the wisdom that comes from above. When you have insight and wisdom that comes from above, then you can be successful. When you have the knowledge and the understanding of a living God, then you can function with Him, walk with Him. You can find the success that He ordains you and I to have, especially in the realms of functioning in the anointing of the Holy Ghost because there's nothing so beautiful as the expressions of the Holy Spirit, as the movings of the Holy Holy Spirit as a manifestation and demonstration of His glory. And that is something we choose to have. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I have heard so many men of God over my life just simply say, talk about what God did and it will happen again. Amen. I remember when uh, one dear brother who God had used more than any single man in his generation. God used him in the word of knowledge more than any single man in his generation. He's still alive today, but he's about 87. 86, 87. And he was talking to another preacher friend of mine. And, he, and, and, and the preacher friend of mine said, tell me, tell me about the angel of the Lord that would always appear for before you as you ministered. And my friend said that he dropped his eye. He dropped his head. Stay with me over here. This is not guessing. I'll tell you later. Just email me. I don't want to publicly say the names. Stay with me. It's not charades. The point's more important than the name. He says, tell me about the angel of the Lord. I heard that you always said the angel of the Lord standing there telling you what's going on. Tell me about it. This dear brother dropped his head. He said, well, the angel's not around anymore. He said, I started trying to be more acceptable to people. I was too strange. And they told me my ministry couldn't be effective until I stopped being so strange. And he said, the angel doesn't come around anymore. And my friend said, just start talking about him. Just start talking about what happened and how it worked and what it was and start consecrating yourself to that realm of God that you found. And it will happen all over again. <laughs> A dear friend of mine was sitting in, the, in my living room the other day, Richard Moore, and I said, and I know what happens when Richard starts trying to tell about when a special anointing came down from heaven to empower him to do the work of the ministry that he's now doing. I know what happens to him, okay? And I just wanted to watch that happen at the dinner table. I said, so, I said, so Richard, I want you to tell me. And he started to tell me. And he's beginning to experience it all over again. I said, now, the next day I said, Richard, I want you to tell me what happened. He told me the whole story. He said, I've never done it. It's the first time ever. Because I wanted him to hear. But then, the, you know, because the reality, I wanted to hear what was going on. I wanted to hear him describe the expressions of the encounters with God. This is not some religious ideology of a God somewhere far, far away. Prisoner in his own heaven, locked up because of Satan's work so that he can't come visit us. This is the wonderful beauty of God with us, Christ in us, Emmanuel, God living and dwelling. I can rise up in the morning, I say, oh God, rise up, oh Lord, and let your power go before us, and let that our enemies be scattered. Yes, yes. Arise, oh God, and go before us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you know that he said he was going to do that? 
that he would go before us and he would be behind us and he would surround us. <laughs> hey, hey, let me just tell you right now. Men might not be able to see it, but devils and angels of hell can see it. They can see it. And it's not long until you start living in the glory of it that you will see it. Because the same person I'm talking about was sitting across the table from me shortly after these events and his face was literally illuminating, shining with the light of God's presence. Literally, literally shining. That's what's going to happen to you people when you decide, I'm God, he's mine, I'm filled up with him, I'm living in every dimension of that which the Word of God describes. People are waiting for a day to come, and I tell you, today's the day. God doesn't do it in the tomorrow. He does it in the today. He does it in the now, not in the future. It's a now salvation. It is, this is the day. This is the time. Now, at this moment, if you harden not your heart by unbelief, unbelief, sorrow, delayed, Waiting for some of you must receive. Well, I can't measure it. I don't, I'm not certain about it. I didn't have that encounter. One time a preacher said to me, said, don't tell people about your encounters with heaven. I said, why? He said, because they're going to feel bad about their experience in God and they're going to be disappointed. I said, it sounds good to me that they should feel bad and that they should be disappointed because then they might get hungry and have their own. Yes, yes. <laughs> they might get desperate for God and want more. Ah, I looked yesterday as I ministered in, an, in a wedding and now just about everybody there was lost and had been lives destroyed with all kinds of, of immorality and alcoholism and drugs and just and, and hurts and pains. And I looked at these people knowing that Christ Jesus wanted to manifest his goodness and his love towards them and he's got a church that's supposed to do it. And the only way we're ever going to do it is that we begin to agree with God. I don't have to wonder someday, I hope, to walk in the Spirit. I walk and I live in the Spirit. Why? It was gifted to me. And the Lord made it so easy. He said, if you simply could understand the gift of God. It says this to a woman who had no right to hear. John chapter 4, verse 10. If you only understood the gift of God, a woman who'd been married five times and was living in adultery. In her culture at that time, she would have been the most immoral, the most evil, the most vile person, the worst of the worst sinners. She was categorized as the worst of the worst. And there's Jesus talking to her. And there's Jesus saying, if you only understood how easy it is. <laughs> if you only understood the divine favor that is directed in your, towards you, what God wants to do with you, how much he loves you, how easy it is, how freely it is received, you would demand of me. You would demand of me. Because he demanded of her, he said, woman, give me to drink. It was a demand. He, it was an imperative. It was a command. Jesus said to the woman, give me to drink. The woman says, how is it that you being a Jew would ask anything of me being a Samaritan? I'm unclean. I'm defiled according to your beliefs. You have no dealings with me. I'm an unclean thing all like a devil. I'm a goyim. And Jesus said, if you just understood the gift of God, if there's anything that God's people need to hear, you need to be willing to be raised up by God to go everywhere to the church today. I mean, because there's so many people lost in the way. They don't know how to walk with God. They're confused. They're unhappy. They're sad. They're, they feel dejected. They feel uh, discouraged. They're overwhelmed. It didn't work out. It doesn't seem to be getting any better because all the circumstances and, that have imposed itself upon them, all the lies of Satan has imposed itself upon them and they've allowed it for too long the hearts become uh, hard and they become hopeless and despairing and they don't know how to get out and somebody needs to come and tell them if you just could understand the gift of God that you could right now instantaneously no matter who you are where you're at where you come from receive the very life of Jesus <laughs> ah, hallelujah man I tell you I don't care what bad thing you are in or what circumstance or situation befalls you if you can just stand there and go oh Lord I thank you for the life that you, your own life that you've given to me is abundant life. Wow. <laughs> That's how I live in divine health. 
That's how I keep from having sicknesses and diseases and viruses. Because anything that attacks my body, I just, first of all, I say, you foul spirit of disease and sickness, you leave me alone, and then I just begin to worship God for the power that he gave me to Amen. live in divine health. I begin to thank him that he lives on the inside of me, walks on, right. on the inside of me, and then something else you must understand. I have learned by the Holy Spirit how to deal with demon spirits. And these are the things that we want to teach you. And if you learn how to deal with demon spirits, you can run it off. And it's when it comes in whatever form it is. And it is an active work of divine grace and power that is on the inside of us like a treasure chest. And there's an authority that says, I will not be denied. It's a realm of breaking through to the manifest presence of God. My, if you've never broken through to the manifest presence of God, then you don't even know what transition is supposed to be being made when faith is activated. <laughs> True. When you've had the manifest presence of God and you recognize, oh, I can live in that, that realm all the time. Yes. When you know that. That's why I can have revival and a move of God in any meeting, every meeting. It doesn't matter if I've got a cheetah pacing behind me at the a wild animal park and a bunch of people staring at me like. <laughs> huh? I had a cheetahs behind me and lions in front of me. <laughs> And they were lions in more than one way. But ah, oh, the glory. Oh, the power of God. Because I know there is a realm that I can live in. There's a divine grace. Yes. Yes. <laughs> they were playing all kinds of music that would in any other circumstance grieve me and I would want to get away from. But because the Lord sent me, I was under a cloud of divine glory. It couldn't touch me. I wasn't subjugating myself to it and yielding my members to it. I was there sitting down with the publicans and sinners talking to them about God's love. <laughs> calling them come into this grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want you to come and live in this grace. Right. Mama you must live by the word. The word of God must come and abide on the inside of you. And when it does, you will defeat Satan at every point. Hallelujah. You will learn that there is a transference of God's divine grace and manifest presence through the indwelling of God the Holy Ghost on the inside of you. Through the manifest presence of the person of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit walking alongside of you. Because he's Holy Spirit. He's with me. He's both with me. Look at think of this. He's both with me and in me. Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Does everybody understand that? He's both with you and in you. John chapter 14 beginning in verse 18, 17 breaks that out to verse 23. And then ultimately not only is the Holy Spirit both in you and with you. Jesus, be of good cheer. I'm with you always. Ha! Come on. Be of good cheer. He said, look, ah, I, know, I know some stuff's coming your way. Some trouble's coming your way. I know there's going to be some fiery trials. I know there's going to be some tribulation. But be joyful. Be of good cheer yeah. means to be exceedingly joyful. To be ecstatic. How can I be ecstatic? What do you mean? This is impossible, God. What are you even talking about? This isn't logical. This isn't rational. This doesn't make any sense. Absolutely. It is not logical. It's not rational. It doesn't make any sense. It's not something that you draw out from the world around you. It's not something that you draw out from material things. It's not something you draw out from the realm of men. It's something you draw from the waters of life, that you draw from the presence of the living God. It's something you draw from the Master who's with you. When you can recognize Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost is with you, my goodness gracious, if you can just agree with God. That's doing the Word that's living by the Word. That's having the Word in you. Young men, I write unto you because you're strong. The Word of God dwells in you. It's not all bottled up. It's an activated Word of God, a living Word of God, a powerful Word of God, an effectual Word of God, a faith-imparting Word of God. Hallelujah. Not not say to yell Now you can, with that, <laughs> I was out of I had this person I'm mentoring and teaching in the things of the Spirit. And I was telling her, I was saying, listen, here's what you're going to understand. Start off with, you basically have a few things that you must trust the Lord with. 
And then when you pass those tests and you learn how to do that, Father gives you more to trust Him with. Hallelujah. When you learn how to cast all of your care upon Him and trust Him in small opposing situations, Father is preparing you to do what I'm doing. To have a property that's worth 14 million dollars to have this and to be doing this and to be doing that and I went through the list of things that one of them would cause would have caused me to be almost overwhelmed and collapsed 30 years ago <laughs> huh but the Lord has taught me every day how not to think about it not to think logically or rationally not to make sense out of nothing not to chart out anything but to live in a faith realm where I'm walking on the water where I'm not moved by the storms of life it's time to go to sleep it's raining I mean Guinness crawl up in the bow of the boat and go to sleep because the wind and the waves and the circumstances of life are a separate realm from where I live and cannot touch the heartstrings of my affections and my desires and my emotions. I have one thing that I desire. I have one affection where my heart is seated with Christ Jesus in a realm of divine authority. My affection is there and I know that God has raised him up and has given him a name that is above every name. That all principalities and powers and might and dominion are subject to them. And you listen to me. You listen to me. There is so much witchcraft in this city. There, I go and I see people all the time and I see witch. I see witchcraft. I see sorcery. I see rebellion. I see stubbornness. And that rules in this place. That rules in this realm. That rules in this city. That rules in this region. That rules in this county. People are infected by that terrible disease. And its infection has reached into the very heart of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it has too much impact on people. <laughs> and you know what? If you are around and you start hearing me coming at it and hitting it hard and screaming and yelling, I'm going to tell you why. Because if I did it, the effect of the atmosphere that people would try to impose in this place would subdue the anointing. And I'm not letting a di one degree, one degree, one degree of the anointing diminish. So I come at it hard. I start uh, rebuking. I start correcting with all authority. I come out with a strong word, a Holy Ghost uh, authority. So that the anointing cannot be subdued by the circumstance, by the, those things that Satan would try to impose. I have this in my daily life. We want you to have this in your daily life. We want you to understand that these things are common. They are common. Jesus said anybody who believes they'll cast out devils. That's just common. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if that doesn't make you feel special, yes. hallelujah. Huh? And I'm going to deal with those that would try to impose itself upon me and work doubt and unbelief and unthankfulness. I'm going to work, I'm going to deal with those things that would try to make me somehow go to my corner and lie down because Satan's in charge around here. Because circumstance is my master. Because money tells me when I can dance and when I got to sit down. Uh -uh. No, sir. Uh -uh. No, you're listening to me here. Papa has given to us an authority, but our affections have got to be in it. My delights, my certainty, my affections that make me feel good about me, makes me feel special. My affections are where he is exalted above all principality and power and might and dominion. And I'm seated together with him. So if I believe that, then I'm, and I'm then willing to just receive it and agree with it, then I'm walking, I'm, I'm one of the untouchables. <laughs> and not in a bad sense with respect to the Indian caste system, I'm untouchable with respect to Satan being able to ever mess with me or impose anything upon me because I'm kept by the power of God. We know that everyone who is born of God keeps himself and the wicked one cannot touch him. That kind of an untouchable. Somebody says, well, are you saying you never have to deal with opposing situations? I tell you, I probably have to deal with more than you do. 
It's just that I have learned, I've been trained by God. He's taught my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken with my arm. I go to pull it back and, oops, I just broke the thing. Give me another one. Huh? He's taught me how to live in him and walk in him to where I can drive back every force of hell that would try to stop me. Somebody said, I've been getting discouraged. Hey, you warming up. You warming up. What's that discouragement doing to you? Huh? Is, that, is it knocking you down? Is it stopping you? Are you standing up saying, I know in whom I have believed that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day and this day too. So Satan, get lost. Circumstance, quiet down. That's right. Cease. Be still. And then I don't wrestle with it much more than that because Satan's like a little kid who's an obnoxious, rebellious little kid who loves to get attention with his obnoxiousness. <laughs> I tell him to get out of here and go in Jesus' name. Then I begin to praise God and worship God. Hallelujah. Now, <clears throat> when you have a call of God upon your life that's going to make a difference within the realms of men, Satan is going to come out against you with all the force that he can. And you've got to understand that there's basic principles that you're going to have to be willing to buy in on if you're going to be effective. You can't come and worship God with a half heart. That's because I'm gonna, you can't come and worship God and begin to lift your voice and sing and praise God with, the, with, with wrong attitudes because it grieves the Holy Ghost. And then I'm going to get upset. Huh? Because if he's grieved and I'm not feeling the manifest presence that I live in, I'm going to start rebuking, then you're going to be upset. Huh? Then the place is going to start getting upset. But it's going to get upset to get healed. Ah, it's going to get upset to get straightened right out. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because somebody is going to have to be willing to have more of a desire than just having success in the ranks of men, but to hold back the forces of hell. To be, to be a witness of a divine realm in which we can live in. You're going to see me in church every time. I'm going to always be full of the Holy Ghost. I'm always going to be full of praise. I'm always going to be full of the word. I'm always going to be full. I'm always going to prophesy. I'm going to never come to a meeting without prophesying. I've never come to a meeting without tongues and interpretation tongues. I have every meeting. Somebody says, you're bragging. Fine, I'm boasting in the Lord, but I'm trying to provoke you to good work so that you do it too. I'm saying, who's, who, I'm saying, whose leadership are you following? Because if you're following my leadership, then you're going to learn how to do it too. You're going to start doing it too. You're going to start getting encouragement. I, I tell you, one of the things that God's people should simply understand is that encouragement comes from the Holy Ghost. He's the encourager. That's his name. And that discouragement comes from the realms of Satan. It comes from beneath. And so we ought to have enough reasoning in God. Come let us reason together. Good different kind of reasoning. It's reasoning with the Word of God now in our situation. Huh? It's not reasoning with men and justifying their lies and their damnable heresies and the, those things which they would impose upon us have nothing to do with the promises of God. Huh? Are you listening to me? Yes. Dear people, Father wants to change everything about your life. Yes. He's going to use the Word. Yes. You're going to have to be willing to agree with the Word of God. You're going to have to be willing to, you're going to have to be willing to say, I'm no longer coming under that realm of oppression. I'm no longer going to allow doubt. And I'm never going to allow these things of discouragement. Satan is the accuser. Uh, the other day the Lord spoke to me and I was, when I was praying, and he said, there's many people pointing fingers of accusation. That's what he said. He said, there's fingers flying all over the place. He said, I just see fingers. <laughs> Isaiah 58 talks about the fingers. God said, you not have nothing for me with those fingers. So I said, cut the fingers off so that you might enter into heaven. Amen. Huh? If you follow me on Facebook, I said, many people have fingers to point at one another. You should cut those fingers off so that you might enter into heaven. You, them, that, those. 
You don't need them. You don't need to defend yourself when God is your defense. And, and you know what? The bottom line of it is, the big, your biggest enemy, you, you have no defense against him. You have no power of yourself to, to, even for one moment to shut him down. All you can do is begin to turn your affections and your heart and, 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 <laughs> and your praise towards him who reigns on high. And say, oh God, lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. Hallelujah. Man, you know, you don't have to live under the power of sin one single day if you just ask the Lord to not lead you into temptation, but to deliver you from evil. Because yep. if you've got, you got a relationship with him where he hears your prayers and answers them, and he said in Isaiah 58, he says, you quit pointing fingers at one another, and then you pray, I'll answer them. Yes. Yes. Huh? Yes. So they could get all their prayers answered, even in the Old Testament, if they did what God said. Hallelujah. How much more in the New Testament, God's ordained this and called us to come into this shining glory. Listen, nothing happens in Avalon without the flowing of the anointing. And you've got to learn how to see the anointing activated and flow. You'll see me sometimes, and I want you to, I want you to take notice. You can feel the atmosphere and the circumstances and situation in the place trying to stop us, trying to impose things upon us because of the mandate the Father has given us in the city. And I begin to worship God and I begin to praise God. And I now recognize where there are things going on where people are offering praise that is not right out of a wrong heart. And I'm going to tell you how to get a right heart. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Wash me. Cleanse me. That's how you begin to get a right heart. Holy Spirit, I yield to you, Father. I want the things of heaven to become real to me. And now it's in truth and spirit. God only wants things in truth and spirit. If it's not in truth and spirit, you listen to me. You are violating a spiritual law on the highest level of a violation. God will only be worshipped in spirit and truth. Anything else is strange fire. You listen to me. If you can just get this, it's just a participating with God. It's just receiving what He's given. It's just act, being activated with all of His goodness. I mean, it's just being right with God. Because you accept what God has done. And yielding your members as instruments or weapons to righteousness unto the Holy Spirit. And, and, and then then in this wonderful realms of God's glory, you say, Lord, let your rivers flow out of me so that I might praise you appropriately, that I might offer praise all right unto your name. Hallelujah. And people stand in this place. And they begin to praise in insincerity. I can feel it because I'm one with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And God wants you to be one with him too, so you can feel it as well. And I go after it in the spirit. People say, my goodness, he looks like he's, you know, <laughs> upset and mad. I'm, I'm going, I'm, I'm dealing with the things that would oppose you. When sickness or disease or circumstances would try to impose itself upon me, for me... It's more than just a little, it's more than just a little thank you, Lord, or rebuking of the devil. I grab a hold of the realms of the Spirit to where the anointing flows through me and I feel the thing broken. I feel it broken. Uh, pray in the Holy Ghost where faith is activated. Build yourself up in your most holy faith or make yourself strong or be strengthened in your most holy faith praying in the Holy Spirit. Huh? I saw what happened when Samson was Samson when he got strengthened. Hey, huh? Oh, Rabba Siki, you talk about the mercies of God. Samson laid down with the harlot the night before, and the next day he could step into the anointing because he knew how to he knew how to repent. He knew how to get right back into the covenant, and he could be strengthened and carry away the gates of the city. Huh? Come on, man. He was sitting around, and their faith is not activated. Remember, if you're on the front row, it's like Shamu, Shamu, you know? You may get wet. I'm a Spitzbergen, I spit when I talk. Okay? Uh, showers of blessings. Maybe not so from your point of view. Sorry about that. I, I hate spitting on anybody. Lord, let it be a special anointing. <laughs> what was I saying? Uh, 
Amen. She's with me, huh? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing happens, nothing changes without the anointing. A virtue of divine grace will flow through us. A power of divine grace will, will, will function in our lives. And the yoke of whatever is coming out against us will be broken. Because we're, do, we're doing more than just a lip service of acknowledgement. We're allowing our spirit, our mind, our thinking to be hooked up with the Holy Spirit. With what he feels, with what he thinks. To deal with his power, not our power, his power. Somebody said, where do I get it? It's treasure on the inside of you. There's a treasure on the inside of you. There's a river on the inside of you. You just got to know how to let the wellspring spring. You just have to be willing to let the river flow. Hallelujah. How to let faith be activated. How to begin to rise up by the Spirit of the Lord and begin to move in a realm of divine power and authority. To recognize, you recognize how the Lord has given us all power. He's given us all strength. And the enemy is going to try to say that that's not true. The accuser is going to try to come and say that's not true. But the intercessor, Christ Jesus, is saying, oh yes, it is true. Just believe me. Just believe. The Lord Jesus comes to you and me all the time. And he's looking at you and he's saying, or do you believe I'm able to do this? So many people just sit down, lie down in the problems or the circumstances or the situations that are, that are being imposed upon them instead of rising up and taking a hold of the treasure that's been given, the power and the grace that's been given. Today I'm calling you to a place to come and know the living God. To refuse ever again to be pushed around, to refuse ever again to be beaten down. And you can say, well, you know, I really went after it and, and the virus was coming at me and I really went after it and I began to pray and, and nothing happened. Well, just stay at it because you're going to get trained out, trained up That's right. on how to have your faith be effectual. Keep, keep going because God hasn't changed his mind. Don't you change yours. Amen. Huh? Don't you get pushed around. Just stand up now. Take the higher ground. Learn that church, there is something that goes on in the meeting, if you will participate with it, that goes beyond anything that, is, that, that, that you can quantitate by an outward expression because you participated because you allowed the spirit of, of truth. You allowed the Holy Ghost to begin to move through you. And he, and he just started off saying, you know, it's time to worship the Lord. I'm going to begin to worship Him. And you just turn your heart away from all the other stuff and your problems and your issues. And you just begin to worship Him. You just begin to praise Him. It isn't going to be long. And the power of divine grace is going to be activated in you. You'll begin to understand the gift of God. That all you have to do is look at the rock and say, water flow. Give me to drink. Amen. Give me to drink. Oh, Moses, go speak to the rock and say, water. Say, rock, give me to drink. This rock is Christ Jesus. This water of life is the realms of the Holy Ghost. Oh, Christ Jesus. Oh, rock of life, give me to drink. That's right. Come on now. now there's a sincerity. There's not an insincerity. An insincerity is a violation. It's a strange fire. It will keep you from ever knowing how to function and flow and operate in this divine power and grace that you and I are supposed to have that our faith may be in the power of God that we may acknowledge every good thing that is within us so that our faith may be activated and become powerful and effectual. These wonder, this wonderful realm of divine grace where the excellency of God that is in us like a treasure can now begin to flow out. Now you've moved from religion to relationship. Yes. Now you've moved from ideology and philosophy into a living power of divine grace in your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You begin to testify of the Lord Jesus Christ. You begin to testify of these good things. And especially the more you're, in many ways, the more you're having to deal with opposition and persecution. Oh, the divine grace of God that will rest on you. 
And I, but I'm telling you right now, there is a realm and place when God's people will begin to participate, begin to agree with God. Hallelujah. Begin to submit to the Lord. Begin to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Begin to just really walk this thing out. That the heights of heaven are made manifest in the earth. People don't realize that there is a Luciferian cult everywhere. That he is the prince and the power of the air, the god of this world. The spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. And he hates the anointing and he will kill the anointing and destroy the anointing anywhere he gets to have an opportunity. He demands that people bow down and worship him. And he uses certain means by which he can accomplish that goal. That's why I love teaching on the book of Revelation we just did on Friday night. I pray that if you weren't there, you'll look at the YouTube, you'll view the YouTube. Because I began to break down some of these things. What's really going on behind the scenes and where is it all going to? I love teaching in the book of Revelation because I like to see, help people understand the big picture of what Satan's agenda is and what he's trying to do. So folks can now have a, that much more of an earnestness and eagerness to be kept by the power of God. To grow, rise up in that realm of functioning and walking in the spirit simply by agreeing with the Holy Ghost. To be strong in the strength of the Lord and power of his might. And it begins as a newborn babe. It doesn't start as a fully matured man or woman of God. It begins as a newborn babe. You desire the sincere milk of the word. You're willing to believe God no matter what happens. You're willing to believe God. Huh? Moses, I mean, forgive me, Paul was on a ship and it looked like everything was going to be a disaster. It looked like it was going to be shipwrecked. It didn't, it didn't look like they were going to live. And God stood before him and in a vision, the angel of the Lord said, nobody will suffer any harm. And he said simply these words, and I believe God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Father has given to us a word of life. See, Paul didn't have a New Testament to run around with. Paul didn't have a New Testament to run around with. He was busy writing it. He was busy writing it. Hallelujah. Uh, and then he gave to us what is the model Christian experience so that we can know what to expect in God. He said, this is how it works. I found this realm of divine glory appeared to me on the road to Damascus. And here's what, it work, here's what happened. And here's how it works. And this is what it looks like. And if you'll do this, you'll get the same results. Amen. Ah! We just want to make it little verses of scripture that we can memorize. We just want to make a little verse of scripture that we can quote and try to tell somebody else about what we believe. And it's obnoxious. It's disastrous. And it's an offense to God the Holy Ghost. Nothing to do with that. Somebody says, what do you believe? I believe that God is in me. He's fully in me. I believe God the Father and God the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Holy Ghost lives and dwells and abides in me and about to reveal himself to you. That's, right. <laughs> That's what I believe. <laughs> That's what I believe. Hallelujah. <laughs> what else would you like to know about what I believe? <laughs> because we want your faith to be in the power of God. Non jete ikea. Non jete isipaya. Alabakete. You can't begin to worship God with offense in your heart, with a wrong attitude in your spirit, and not grieve the Holy Ghost. You can stand there and you can justify yourself and believe that what you, whatever happened to you is right and it's justifiable for you to have a bad attitude. But what you don't recognize is that you just grieve the Holy Spirit. And you've made your concerns more important than whether or not Father's blessed. Father's concerns are being met. You've exalted yourself above the living God. This happens continually. People like me can feel it. Thus we come and rebuke it strongly. And we correct it. And then what happens is if people live under the influence of demonic spirits, they get mad because they're religious. Or they become discouraged and sad because they don't want to change. So few, it seems so few, have the ability to know the joyful sound, to love the rebuke, to love the correction. 
to recognize, can't even begin to imagine why Habakkuk said, I go upon my high place and see what the Lord says when he rebukes me. When he corrects me, when he straightens me out, so that I can walk even in a greater dimension of his glory. People, people want to hold on to their own image. God wants to strip that image from you. God wants to remove that image from you and give you the very image of the Son. Give you the very image. You can't live your life and the life of Christ at the same time. You've got to decide which one's more glorious. You or Him. Your life or His life. I tell you, if you hang on to your life, you're going to lose it. That's right. But if you lose your life, you're going to have it. You're going to find it forever. Hallelujah. You're going to find the real life. I tell you, the life that Jesus has is far better than any life that I've ever had of myself. I'd rather have his life and live for him than any other life, so I'm going to live it all day long, and he's given me a provision to be able to do it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. So come the best key, Taina. He came to Satarani Pitea. Balastatea. Bokasea Renekasi. See, I can have a move of God without any music. I can get you right over in the glory without you singing. And sometimes I get you in the glory quicker by preaching the word to you than you singing. Because your heart's got to get straightened out. You've got to know where you're at. You've got to recognize where you're at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, but what happens when the saints begin to sing by the Spirit? What happens when the saints of God begin to sing in spirit and in truth? What happens when there's a divine glory that's bigger than the sound of the music? Than the sound of heaven is heard. That's all I want. God the Holy Ghost taught me how to do music. God the Holy Ghost taught me how to worship Him. And He wants to teach you too. Hallelujah. And when you begin, Tu saradipi ala Maya by the Holy Ghost. Oh, my, the thrills of heaven. <laughs> the joy of His presence, the manifestation of His power, the goodness of His workings. Hallelujah in our midst. There should be no sickness or disease among us by the time we're finished worshiping. It's true. How can you interact with God? How can the river of life flow to you and your ground still be barren? How can the river of God flow to you and your trees uh, not become fruitful? Hallelujah. Wherever the river flows, life, is, life comes and things begin to grow. Hallelujah. What was once a wilderness becomes a fruitful garden of Eden. How hard, how difficult is it? Oh, all you got to do is be believing. Hallelujah. All you got to do is agree with them. All you got to do is be captivated by him. All you got to do is begin to consider all that he's done. Oh, bless the Lord of my soul. And all that's in me. Bless his holy name. Forget not all of his benefits. How he daily loads me with benefits. He's loaded me up so much with benefits. I need supernatural help to carry them around. Hallelujah. 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 He heals. He heals. He heals. Hallelujah. He heals all my sicknesses. Hallelujah. He heals all my diseases. See, this is how you live in divine health. This is it. This is it. He heals all my sicknesses. He heals all of my diseases. Ah, He's cleansed me from all of my sins and my iniquities. He remembers no more. See, that's peace with God. People go back and they contemplate the failures of the past and it's a prison to live in. But all, oh, when you receive peace from God, there's now no more condemnation. He remembers your sin and your iniquities no more. Your failures and your shame. He laid upon Jesus that you may enjoy every day the, His unblemished favor. His unblemished favor. Hallelujah. That then causes your heart to sing. It causes your soul to rejoice in God's Redeemer. But as long as you're crippled with all these wrong attitudes, crippled with all this wrong disposition, crippled with all of these memories, with all of this vexation, a spirit. You cannot praise him. Your song cannot be true. Amandeya. The preacher's got to scream and holler at you. How can you sing that song with a frown on your face? You look like your lips sinking to me. Ha <laughs> ha. 
And then people are going to get sad. Oh, I can't believe he said that to us. Oh, he needed to say that to you. And he needs to say it to you until you change. <laughs> because your, your impact is far greater than just your own person. You are giving false witness to the testimony of Jesus Christ. And the change of life that comes to us by this wonderful power of God through the new birth. One people, one thing, when people lie to men, it's another thing when you lie to God. It's one thing when a person bears false witness against a man. It's another thing when people bear false witness against Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and what it is He's done. I want every dimension of your life, God wants every dimension of your life to be conformed to the image of Jesus. He wants every dimension of your life to give witness and testimony to the Word of God. So the people look at you, they look at the Bible, they look back at you and go, Wow! Wow! This is amazing! How did that happen? You said, I, all I did was believe. All I did was agree with God. He gave me the ability to understand the gift of God. All I had to do, all you have to do today is ask. <laughs> All you have to do today is ask yes. and say, give me the drink. Amen. Give me the drink. All you have to do is come to the one whose mercies are new every morning and just simply say, Lord Jesus, cleanse me. Wash me. Oh, take away every stain of sin from my life. Holy Spirit, strengthen me. Empower me that my faith may be in your power. I'm not going to do it by flesh and blood anymore. I'm not going to do it by my own strength anymore. I'm going to learn how to rely upon you. I'm going to learn how to hook up with the surges of heaven. I'm going to learn how to look up with the flow of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to learn how to hook up with the currents of the divine. Yes, okay. I said to a prophet just the other day on the phone, I said, it's about time we stop doing a Fred Flintstone. Uh, the feet are going as fast as they can and going nowhere while they scream a yabba dabba do. <laughs> it's time we start moving with the force of heaven. The man of God agreed strongly. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the expressions of the divine. What's more important to you? This life or the heavenly one? I tell you, if the heavenly life has not become more important to you, it's because you've never experienced it. Because once you do, I tell you, you want to live in heaven more than hell. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. My, once you've been to heaven, you never want to go back to hell. Uh, once you've been delivered out of the jaws of hell, torment and affliction, and brought into the bliss of his glory, you're not saying, I want to go back to hell. <laughs> <laughs> You're clinging, 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 clinging to Jesus, cleaving, cleaving to him. I cleave, my soul cleaves unto the Lord. I cleave to him because my soul cleaves to him because I acknowledge him. I've I have put him before me. I have set him in my right hand that I should not be moved. I recognize that I have two friends with me right now. I have Christ Jesus and the Holy Ghost with me. You talk about special. Come on. Man. <laughs> and he's opened this door to all men everywhere. No matter who you are. No matter what you've done. No matter what your race or nationality is. No matter what language you speak. No matter what the color of your skin is. God's opened this opportunity. I've seen some of the most uneducated men out in Papua New Guinea coming from very isolated and desolate places. So filled with a relationship with God that when they prayed, when they just simply said, Oh, Papa God, the place shook with their, with just the expression, Oh, Papa God, as they begin to pray. Because it's born out of relationship. Brother Yun's going to be here next Sunday morning, and um, when he's when you know when he's really off the restriction of of men trying to 
place him in a time frame when his handlers can't handle him. <laughs> oh, it's true. And people aren't telling him how much people can endure. And about people enduring. That's Laodicean. To please the people. It's about what God would do to break off the yokes, the heavy bands. What needs to take place for you to be changed. For you to confront God. Have a confrontation with Him. Have an encounter with the living God. Which is all that's going to make the difference of where you spend your life in eternity. Amen. People say Jesus didn't talk about hell. Jesus said it'd be better for you to pluck your eye out than to spend your life in hell. That's, right. that's what He said. He said it'd be better for you to cut your hand off than you to spend your life in hell. You need to get serious because I'm telling you, wrongdoing and wickedness and sin will land you in an eternity without God. Because Father's going to have a new heaven and a new earth wherein dwells only righteousness. Hallelujah. Yeah. And I guarantee you right now, there's nobody going to be standing around the throne of grace or upon the crystal sea with some frowny expression on their face. <laughs> so you might as well practice getting happy. So you might as well practice. You might as well come out of your bondage and your affliction. Amen. Where the ball and chain is hooked around both ends of your mouth. The sides of your face. Father, Father, Father beautifies you with his salvation. Whoa. Listen to me. This is the best beauty aid that I go, that's going. Listen to me. Listen to me. So I said, why do you feel so special? Why do you feel so important? He beautified me with salvation. Amen. He gave me the same glory that the Father gave to him. He made me a co-inheritor with him and an heir of God. He gave me the same sonship that is only defined by His sonship. This is power and authority to live a different life. This is divine ability where faith surges through me. And everything that Satan would try to do has, is opposed with the Word of God, who is Christ Jesus. Amen. Live and dwelling in me. Living, dwelling in you. Sorry, but There's no greater life than this life that we now live. Where Jesus Christ is manifested in our mortal bodies. This life that we now live in the flesh. This life that we now live in the flesh. Somebody said, are you living in the flesh? Absolutely. And let me just tell you how I'm living in the flesh. This life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For Jesus was manifested in the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> And I have taken a hold of this wonderful place in Him. And I want you to take hold of it too. Just be, just give yourself to living in heaven. Give yourself to the charge of the Lord. Give yourself to keeping those things which He said for you to keep. Doing the things that He said for you to do. Don't look at your results, look at Him. Amen. At the end of it all, just say, I'm an unprofitable servant. I've done what he commanded me to do. Don't say, oh, well, I prayed for somebody and they didn't get healed. No, you obeyed God and you prayed for them. Amen. Huh? And in expectation and faith, you were confident that they would be healed and you're just going to leave it in God's good keeping. That's yes. right. Hallelujah. That's right. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I, that's why I can always pray the prayer of faith. I did my part. He does his part. Hallelujah. He's the healer. Praise God. When you're willing to walk through the fiery trials of opposition, when you're willing to stand up against everything that Satan tries to do, to lie and condemn and hide the glory and resist steadfast, resist you steadfast in his power of unbelief, you stand up and you resist him steadfast in the faith. You're going to grow. You're going to be strengthened. You're going to mature. Amen. Amen. I, I see Paul's life. 17 years consecrated to obeying those over him in the Lord. Learning, being taught, being submitted to the government of the church. And then released upon humanity. 
with great signs and wonders and miracles. There has been so much rebellion. There has been so much rebellion that has been modeled as good. That has been modeled as life. And there's no rebellion that's good and there's no rebellion that's life. And especially here in the Western world and people don't want to come under the authority of anyone. I pray in Jesus' name you'll come under the authority of the word. Anybody who speaks the word, if it's a three-year-old child, you submit it to it. Hallelujah. Anybody who functions and flows by the Holy Ghost, your heart begins to rejoice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord. David, why don't we just stand, all stand and we'll sing, Jesus, you my everything. Sibod and I, just stand with me and we're going to sing, Jesus, you my everything. Let me say this. If there's anything wrong in your heart, if there's any attitude that's wrong, just keep playing. Then you just get right with Jesus right now. You ask the Lord to forgive you because you never can really offer praise and right with your holding something on. Something in your heart that's wrong. If there's doubt and unbelief, if you feel like that somehow you're not good enough, that's a stinking lie. That's a lie from hell. Jesus wants you to understand the gift of God. It ain't about being good enough. It's about whether or not you're going to ask. But whether or not you're going to demand, give me to drink. Because all I want is this life that comes from you. I want you to sing this song with us and just worship the Lord.
I'll bring an offering. Just Father, in the name of Jesus. The sacrifice of praise. Let it be a sweet sound. Sing it with me. And we will sing and praise your power. Be exalted, O oh Lord, in your own strength. We will sing and praise your power. We're getting ready to have a... Uh, we're getting ready to have a holy convocation. We're getting ready to have an assembly in which we believe that God would begin to move with such Holy Ghost conviction and, and touch people with a greater awareness of His holiness. It's going to happen on the October 17th, 18th, and 19th. We've invited 
uh, a dear brother that God is using and we're purposed that we would hook up in faith with him for this event. And I, I want to encourage all of you to really put your heart into this and, and put your hand to the plow in this. Yeah. And I, I don't want you to invite people to come. I want you to compel them to come. Yes, thank you. And I want to help you understand what compelling is. I'm going to come pick you up. Yeah. You understand that? Yes. And so, you can just keep playing a little bit. I mean, just follow my leadership. It'll do us all good. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Sikara basikina namaka ekinita. Erestikina kata ekinipakariho. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, dear people, I'm asking you to engage. I'm asking you to hook up with me and engage in seeing the powers of darkness pushed back. Now, is that going to be challenging? Are you kidding me? Of course. But we will able to do it. Are you going to have to come up against opposing things? Is it going to be convenient? Is there, or is it going to work out that you're going to have time? Of course not. Of course not. Thus you're going to have to decide what it's going to be like. This is the way it works. Is somebody going to give you a run right up the middle? No. You're going to have to leap over a wall. And run through a troop. And so if you can understand what really is being expected of you, you won't be discouraged. But right now, Ruth Anna and Daniel are leading the, the charge on this thing. And they need a lot of help. They need, they need, they need people to come alongside and help. And I'm, I know that a number of you have already been given assignments. If you haven't been given assignments, there's assignments to have. We've got a lot of work to do out here on, in, the, in the parking lot because we're going to do the meeting in the parking lot. And I mean, I'm believing God for a minimum of 500 people here and praying that it be 10 times bigger. Now, I'm telling you, in our backyard is Grips High School. And we want to hit the high schools and we've got, we've got several people mobilized. But if you're not, if you can't do anything, then you need... If you can't build it, if you can't, if you can't do anything, then you need to finance it. Are you with me? Yeah. If you can't do anything, if you're laid up at the house, you need to finance it. Are you hearing me? Yeah. People here and on the web. Hallelujah. So we got we got a platform to build out there, and we not we not, you know, we're not last minute, come late. We, we, you know what I'm saying? We, we, we get it done, get time, get it all tested out. Amen. Amen. So, we've got a lot, we've got a lot of things that we need people to do. We want every one of you, as we said the other night, to have a trowel, building with a trowel in, a, in one hand and a weapon in the other. Speaking of Nehemiah, when Nehemiah had returned to begin to build... I mean, look at the revival that God wants to have. I mean, you talk about opposition. You look at Nehemiah and, and Ezra, and you look at the time at Haggai and Zechariah and Malachi are prophesying. Those were opposing days, but look at what the prosperity and the blessing that God took them to because they were under leadership and they were under authority. They knew how to get put everything. They knew how to put everything to work in their life. And I mean, Haggai says, look, you guys are saying... That you need to take care of yourself. No, you don't. That's why you're not blessed. He said, don't take care of yourself. He said, we need to build our houses before we can build the house of the Lord. He said, don't do that. He said, build the house of the Lord. And the blessing will be upon you so that even before you plant the seed, there will already be a harvest. Amen. And I want to read this verse of Scripture to you here because I don't think it's read enough. Because I want you to get ready to give. I mean, I want you to give on the level. I want you to give on the level that, it, that God can cause it to be pressed down, shaken together, and running over so that men will be able to begin to heap into your bosom. Right. I mean, if men aren't heaping into your bosom, you're not giving the way you're supposed to be giving. 
Are you listening to me? You're not living the way you're supposed to be living if you're not getting the results that God has promised in His Word. Now, people, it's just so important that everybody gets this. It's so important that everybody believes this. Hallelujah. Tikaramo sambrangeya shikomanea. Berishingalaya no mondori. Praise God. Mainlandeo lomokuya. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ruro mangeya. Praise the name of the Lord. Zayri mangaleo. Merishana. I said Matthew chapter 6, but I think I want to read out of Luke chapter 12, rather. Matthew chapter 6 is a sermon on the mount, and Matthew chapter 12 is a sermon on the plain. Two different sermons. It's a sermon that Jesus preached all the time, preached quite a bit of. Okay? And he says this. He says, in verse 21, he says this. He says, so, he says, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself. And is not rich towards God. Okay? And he just began to talk about somebody who said, whose prosperity was set upon themselves. Okay, I'm not going to go through that. Because I want you to just hear. He's talking to someone whose prosperity was set upon themselves. And not towards God. And it, was, it didn't work out. He said, you fool. Your soul should be required of you. He says, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself. The Lord made it very clear what it means to lay up treasure in heaven when he talked to the rich man. He said, go sell all that you have and give it to the poor and you have treasure in heaven. Yeah, made it very, very clear. Jesus made it very, very clear in, in Matthew chapter 6. He said, lay not up treasure upon the earth. And there's, there's too many people laying up treasure on the earth. I'm telling you, you need to put it to God's use. You need to put it to use. And so I said, well, if I do that, then I'm going to be without. That's not true because you, God, and you must be misinformed. God promised to cause that gift to be multiplied. He promised that not only would men, but would it be pressed down, shaken together, and running over, men would heap into your bosom, but he said he would give you a great harvest. Somebody said, oh, if I give generously, and if I give exotically, and if I give with total abandonment, I'm going to receive persecution. Somebody's going to persecute me for it. The Lord said, good. Yeah. He said, now you're going to, there's another double blessing coming on you for that. So there are, there is no excuse. And he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. And now the Lord brings it right down to the business of why people aren't rich towards God. And why people don't lay up treasure in heaven. Why isn't, why isn't it their mindset about sowing into the kingdom? Why isn't their mindset about, uh, about advancing the kingdom of heaven through giving? Because they're taking thought for their life. They're taking the thought for their food. They're taking thought for their body, what they're going to put on it. And he he says, wait a minute, you don't understand. I'm going to take good care of you. Your life is far more than what you, than me. Your life is far more, your body's far more than raiment. And, and he goes through, you know, laying out the argument of how he's going to take good care of us. And he says in verse 28, he said, If God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he take care of you? Oh, you have little faith. Everybody who wants God to say, Oh, you have little faith, raise your hand. <laughs> I'd rather have God say, This is faith. This is great faith. I'd rather have him say, Oh, you have great faith. Okay? I want, and if I've got little faith, then I want the little faith to be developed into great faith. Well, then how is little faith going to be developed into great faith? By obeying God and participating with Him and doing what He said to do. It isn't going to happen passively and, 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 and actively. Faith is going to be effectual. It's going to be activated as you begin to acknowledge every good thing in you and every good promise that God has made. So I want you to begin to reach beyond your own ability. I want you to get your... I, here's what I want you to do. I want you to get your mortgage out of the way. Because I'm going to bring it down in modern terminology. I want you to get your mortgage out of the way. I want you to get your car payment out of the way. I want, to get you, I want you to get your whatever other budgets you got out of the way. Because that budget's Amen. keeping you from budgeting. That's right. <laughs> Are you listening to me? That's right. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. 
And I want you to just go ahead today and I want you to give an offering in righteousness. I want you to give an offering that says, Lord, I want to be a part of the things that we're building and the things that we're doing and the work of the ministry that is going forth right now. I don't want it to fall on somebody else's shoulders. I'm not going to be busy taking my own care of my own stuff because reality of it is is it never ends taking care of your own stuff never ends you got to make a switch and start taking care of God's stuff so that God can bless you and his stuff will come be first and it will lead the way for in every dimension of your life and there's a secret about finances and a secret about giving and a secret about where you put the you know the focus of your treasure whether it's on yourself or in the kingdom of God that ultimately results in a breakthrough spiritually in your life. It's not like you're giving, it's not like you're buying your way in. That's people making up something that God never said. You're not buying your way in. Nobody say anything about buying your way in. It's talking about, we're rather talking about hooking up with his faith and believing his promises and following him into things that he's he, that he's leading us to, to go and do. And so uh, what I want you to do is anybody's got lack, we want you to break the back of we want you to break the back of lack. Yep. Okay? Right now by giving. And anybody who's not wealthy towards God and you can't give more and your giving hasn't gone up, it's the same, then we want you to press in to a whole other dimension of divine provision because the Lord said this. He said, if you sow generously, you shall also reap generously. So if you've been, if you've been reaping sparingly, you know what reaping sparingly is? You basically have the same level of finances. You have basically the same level of overhead and income uh, that you've always had. So your net profitability is whatever, you know? Come on now. Come on. God wants your gross national... God wants your gross net profits to be huge. Okay? Hallelujah. So that you can begin to sow uh, in, in a greater way, in a, in a more diverse way. And, and oh, what Father is doing in our lives and through our lives and the events that we are pressing up against right now. We're so believing that we're going to be able to take in the first um, orphans that we're going to be training here in the year 2015. I wanted to do it by year 2013. Of course, I'm a bit aggressive with things and, um, you know, and, and so bottom line of it is it could have been done. Uh, Chris told us if he was out there for a month, he would have finished it all up. But we didn't, he wasn't able to come. <laughs> <And so laughs>, I, I love that kind of faith and that kind of passion. That's great. And, uh, but we want every one of you to feel that way. We want, you to, we want you to understand that if we just step out and believe God, we can conquer the world. I believe that the Lord is training people in this place. I know the Lord is training me in this. He's already given me a token of it. That... In, 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 little, in a little period of time, a little window of time, we will go in and we will take nations just like we did with Nepal. We'll do things in nations that have never been done before. And, you know, some of the greatest ministries that there are, they only really ran for 10 years. TL really only ran strong for 10 years in, his great, in the great things that God did with him in ministry. And it doesn't matter what 10 years the Lord chooses. And what happens if the Lord advances it? And in two years, we were able to do more than people have done up to this point in a in hundred years. So, I mean, I believe that God is raising people up to do that. If you want to be a part of that, you're going to have to learn how to give with total abandonment because you're going to have to learn how to receive with, with abs that same kind of absolute faith. Because when you begin to believe God for budgets, Hallelujah. When you begin to, you've got to you gotta be able to cast all you care upon him, trust him, and not worry or be concerned about the thing for just even a second. Otherwise, it won't work. If you carry around worry, concern, faith doesn't work. It just it doesn't work. So today, we want you to be able to give according as God has given you the measure of faith. But yet, at the same time, we want you to believe God to increase that faith and to move you into a higher realms of expectation. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen? So I just invite all of you, just come worship the Lord with your tithes and offering. Watch what God's going to do through you. Amen.